Hey Cornerstone family, welcome to this week's Sunday service. My name is Jonathan Arantes. If we have not met yet, I am the youth director here at Cornerstone Church. And can I just start off by saying it is an honor and a privilege to be able to host uh, the first Sunday service of December 2020. Uh, it's been a roller coaster, but hey, if you've been feeling blessed or encouraged by these Sunday services, can I go ahead and invite you to invite your friends, your family, your neighbor, uh, whoever it may be to watch these Sunday services with you, or just sending them the link through Facebook or YouTube or our online website. Uh, so usually in December, um, we at Cornerstone here, we, we our tradition is to have a beautiful uh, play or musical that we usually host uh, for everybody to come and watch. But due to the circumstances of 2020, uh, we cannot meet. But we've been working diligently and very hard. And I'm excited to be able to announce that on Friday, December 18th, um, we're going to have a five piece Christmas mosaic. It's going to be super awesome. It's going to have music videos, spoken word, a beautiful story behind it. And um, if you want, we're also going to actually host a watch party through Zoom. So you can go ahead and sign up. Um, it's a, I think it's going to be a great way to invite your small groups, your family, your friends, your neighbor, whoever it may be. Um, so I encourage you to check out for that Christmas mosaic. Um, also, Another thing to take note is our candlelight services. Um, if you've ever been to them, they're super beautiful. It is just a beautiful time to one, really just focus onto the Lord uh, and the birth of Jesus. And then the way that we're able to just have their candles and it lights up the whole sanctuary is really beautiful. And we're still having it. And what we're doing so that we can all feel connected to this is we are doing these candle care packages um, where it's little kits that have these candles um, and if you sign up through the website you're gonna be able to receive these and so when you watch the candlelight service uh, you, so you can also have your candle uh, I think it's gonna be really beautiful it's gonna, definitely gonna be different but once again uh, if we're able just to focus on Jesus and the birth of him uh, who came to save us and give his life and rise from the dead I think it's gonna be really awesome I am very excited for worship. I love worship. I think when we are able to worship, we definitely grow closer to the Lord, uh, depending on a lot of circumstances we go through, whether we're going through anger or depression or sadness, um, or if we're feeling happy. When we're able to worship, it really moves our heart towards the Lord. And in the end of the day, that's really that all that matters is our heart for Jesus. So let's take it off with worship and let's do it.
heaven in your son on that, on that holy night so that we can be one with you. this moment, that this time of year is the marking point, a reminder to our souls that you came down to show the Father's love to us, to give us freedom, to give us light in a dark world, God. And so we thank you, light of the world, for coming. We thank you, Prince of Peace, for meeting us here. And we keep our attention focused on you in the remaining time we have in our service. We honor you here in this time, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. It's so good to worship together as we welcome in Christmas. Let's continue our service for today. When we started the year out, we had this feeling that God wanted us to pursue sow, water, and reap. 
we thought we saw clearly. Little did we know, have any clue, of what the year was going to turn into. When March hit and we had the beginning of the COVID pandemic, it literally blew everything up. None of us had any inclination that it was going to last as long as it has. But one of the things that became apparent was that this was actually an opportunity. Now we always talk about the opportunity in adversity, but every now and then God puts us in a place where we get to live out what we think we know and what we say we believe. And this was one of those times we had to just make a choice as a church to have vision and trust God and to be adaptable and nimble and to try to be, as we've been talking about, resilient. So what first started out as a, <laughs> just like a big giant question mark and a huge disruption is at the same time a remarkable opportunity for us to be the church in a different way. When we looked at the shift at our community going completely online, we wanted to create content that would complement our Sunday experience. So we created things like Instagram Worship Live. We launched a midweek service, as well as a weekly music show with Phil Pasercio and a morning devotional with Odalis Terencio. It's for the purpose, if you really get down to it, of so water, watering and reaping. I mean, it's about wanting to reach people with the goodness of the Lord. In March, I decided to go back home and be with my family. I was able to share with them the online services, and we were able to just hear about God's goodness. After a while, I had to come back to San Francisco for work, and it was during those times that I felt myself very alone and just dealing with a lot of problems and really looking forward to the online services. I felt peace and comfort being able to hear about God's goodness every Sunday. And I was reminded that I wasn't alone. And I really feel like God has been telling me through the online services, Dixie, why are you pushing me away? Why aren't you bringing me in? Bring me in and lean on me. Let me help you through these problems. And I feel like God has opened my heart to be able to share my struggles with others and to be able to ask for prayer. And that alone is an amazing change that has a, a happened to me during this time. One of the things that's been impressive is that the church has managed to not just, you know, stay together, but also because of your faithfulness in giving, and I need to say this, you've allowed us to be able to keep doing the things that God's gifted us to do. But the tithes and the offerings and the resource support the prayers, everything that's gone into helping us get to where we are, honestly, it's stirring our heart about where we're supposed to go heading into the coming year. We are going to have a, a unique challenge in 2021. Our goal is to not only try to begin to, when the time is appropriate, reconfigure gathering, we also want though to continue with the same kind of quality online experience. You know, we're gonna have to really push ourselves on both ends to try to make this happen, but we believe we can do it. Maybe the end of the year giving this year might be even more important than it's been in the past because it's gonna set the table, or at least it's gonna help us to do this really unique goal that we have. All these efforts are being done for you um, and us together, because we really are together right now. And we've been holding together, making this journey together. It's what we said we were gonna do, and we're doing it. And we're gonna do it, Lord willing, into the coming year. And 2021 is gonna be a year of great breakthrough for us. That's my conviction and belief. And I so look forward to what's ahead, but at the same time, in a unique way, I wanna also appreciate the blessing of what is actually happening now. Cause I don't think we're ever gonna forget it. And Lord willing, we'll be able to go back, look back and say, wow, we grew through this time. That's the goodness of God, the grace of God at work in all of us. Again, I'm so thankful, so grateful for all of you. We've made this journey together and now we're approaching the end of the year. We're in the Christmas season. And one of the things that the Christmas season does is it invites us to trust. It invites us to cultivate a heart of worship, to keep our hearts tender and soft, and to not to be afraid of um, adversity or difficulty. I mean, you think about it, Jesus's birth was connected to 
so many inconvenient things. And yet God came to us in the midst of that place uh, and has given us the gift that is the greatest gift in all the world, the gift of Jesus. And, you know, we're invited to embrace this. If we choose to do it, this time could be an amazing time of blessing. Um, I'm convinced of it. And I'm hoping that as we prepare to share, because the series is Heart of Worship, and it has to do with just a worshiping heart that's open and really trying to engage the opportunity of Christmas, no matter what the limitations we're facing, there is a blessing here for us. Now, Pastor Sam is going to be, Sam Markham, who some of you know, he's one of our young pastors here. He's going to be sharing a message with us, a teaching. And it's coming out of his heart, and you'll feel it, I'm sure. Because one thing I know about Pastor Sam, he has a deep love for all of you. He loves people, and that overflows. And um, I'm sure we're about to be strengthened and encouraged. But I do want to, oh, one more thing. I want to remind everybody, don't forget, take advantage of the Rise and Shine Christmas season challenge. Um, we're trying to use this as a way of connecting ourselves in community through the Advent season. So, you know, do that every morning. And if you don't have the app, you know, get the app, turn the notifications on and you're going to get it sent to you. And it's just a quick one button push. I mean, you can do it online as well. Go straight that way. But I love the idea of getting the notification and uh, it's worth it. it. It comes in at six in the morning on Pacific time. And uh, it's a way for all of us to keep our hearts attuned in unity, in the love of Jesus as we welcome in his coming. So even now, Lord, we welcome you. Bless the time that we have left to spend together and uh, be near to us. Gentle Savior, come in your name. We ask it. Amen. Morning and happy Sunday. My name is Sam Markham and I've been on staff here at Cornerstone since early 2009. I work closely with our small groups, our classes and different aspects of community. And I describe myself as a somewhat introverted but athletic nerd who cares deeply for people. And in the past couple of years, I've had the, the privilege and honor of serving as the site pastor at our Reardon campus location. But I, I'd love to just start by inviting the Lord into our time together. So please join me as I pray. So Lord, we, we thank you for this day. Lord, we, we thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us. And in this season, we are invited to prepare our hearts for your coming. And even this theme of the heart of worship invites us to, to examine our hearts, to, to cultivate within us the things that, that help us to worship you and to explore what that looks like. So I just ask that you would, would be in our time together today. Help us to, to hear the things that we, you want us to hear, to apply the things that you want us to apply, and, and to be able to uh, just walk through this together as a community. I just ask this in, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I love Christmas in the Advent season, these weeks of anticipation and, and preparation. And I, yeah, I remember as a child watching for the JCPenney Christmas catalog with its extended toy section. For, for those under 30, uh, a catalog is an old fashioned paper booklet that, they used to, that stores used to print in order to advertise a select number of products that they thought people might want to purchase in a given season. And the JCPenney Christmas catalog was substantial. Uh, it wasn't quite as thick as a dictionary, but it was close. Uh, for those under 30, a dictionary is this old fashioned kind of book that people had to turn through to find this, you know, to spell check words or to find a definition of a word. Uh, but anyway, the, the arrival of the JCPenney catalog was the, the true sign that Christmas was approaching. And soon thereafter would come, you know, Christmas music and all the, the stores and the malls. 
So for those under 30, stores and malls used to be where you had to go to buy things. Like you had to physically get in your car and drive somewhere and then it might not even be there. Like the, the thing might be sold out or it might not be there. And so, uh, it, you know, the internet didn't exist yet. It wasn't the locus of, of commerce that it is today. Um, so times were really tough. Anyway, I, I jest a little, but no matter how much things change because of the passing of time and, and the uniqueness of, of this season, uh, you know, that we're experiencing here in 2020, I find my heart even more filled with joy than usual. Christmas does that. And even if some of us have memories of Christmas that aren't all that joyful due to broken homes and loss of loved ones and other stressors that get magnified around the holidays, there's something undeniable in the air around Christmas. It feels, it feels different. There, there's hope for something new, something better. Jesus' birth created and continues to provide that. The theme of the heart of worship fits well into Advent since we're aspiring to prepare our hearts anew for celebrating this gift that we have in Jesus. So in this time of preparing for Christmas, let us prepare our, ourselves for the hope and the new thing that comes from drawing near to him. I love that. <laughs> so, so when I was asked to share in a series called The Heart of Worship, my first thought was, why? <laughs> for, for those who have had the privilege of sitting next to me while sing, singing during the worship music part of our services back when we were in person, uh, you quickly realize that this is not my strength. As a young Christian, this actually created a sense of inability to connect with the Bible passages that pointed towards the value of worship and singing. I didn't want to distract others with my less than angelic voice. And I, I didn't also want to bring anything to God that wasn't good. And in my senior year of university, a close friend of mine approached me and asked me to join a gospel choir that she was going to lead. And I promptly responded with my, my vocal self-evaluation. I, I tried to help her understand what little value I could bring to a choir. Unconvinced or unswayed, she said, well, can you, can you clap in rhythm? And I said, I, I can clap in rhythm. She said, can you blend? I said, I don't know what blending is. She said, well, why don't you come and audition and, and we'll see. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll make, it, make you embarrass yourself. I'll, I'll just, I'll give you feedback. And, and if it'll work, great. And if not, no big deal. So I auditioned and, and, and she reassured me that she thought I could blend well enough to help round out the sound. And so I, I started to rethink my vocal evaluation and say, well, well, if it's good enough for a choir that's going to do performances and stuff, then maybe it's good enough to, to sing in church. And so I, I started singing a little more confidently in church and singing a little more confidently at home. But uh, when we got close to our first performance, we, we received our t-shirts that we were going to wear. And on it was, uh, it was the first time I got exposed to, or at least noticed, uh, the first verse of Psalm 100. And for those who've caught our Thanksgiving service, Pastor Terry shared out of Psalm 100. It's a beautiful song that, that was written as a, as a praise to God, giving thanks to him and acknowledging just how good he is and, and how good his gifts are and how perfect and amazing. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful psalm. But the first verse in particular you know, caught my attention on, the, on this t-shirt because it was written out. It said, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Make a joyful noise. I could make a joyful noise. I, if that was our standard, maybe I wasn't that great, but maybe that wasn't the point. See, worship is more than just a song. It's a posture. It's a positioning ourselves rightly before God. And Psalm 100's joyful noise reassures us that it is the heart in our worship even in singing, that matters. So it's, it's our heart that matters. So to dig into this, let's look at the, the letter from the Apostle Paul to the Romans. And Romans chapter 12 has been one of the most important chapters of the Bible throughout my entire faith journey. It contains the first passage of scripture that I ever memorized. And, th and that verse became a, a sort of life verse for me, something that, that became something that helped me construct how following Christ would look like as, as I learned and, and grew. And then it goes on to position what worship can look like regardless of our singing ability. So let's, let's check this out. So in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, we read, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, and that's an inclusive term. It's just, it's translated as brothers here. By the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So as we approach this holiday season, it's worth considering what it, a living sacrifice and spiritual worship entails. So Jewish tradition relied heavily on the sacrificial system. Animals were killed and presented to God in order to cover the cost of sins and temporarily make people right with God. 
It may seem strange now, but it was a way of helping people understand how significant our brokenness and the subsequent separation from God that came as a result was and is. However, Jesus came and offered himself as a perfect sacrifice so that the price of sin could be paid in full forever. And thus, animal sacrifices, or we could call them dead sacrifices, were no longer needed. Instead, we are invited, as, as the Apostle Paul does here, to become living sacrifices. Because of what Jesus did through the cross, instead of dying for sin, we get to live for the Lord. This is our spiritual worship. So the first thing I want to note is that having a heart of worship involves living for the Lord. So having a heart of worship involves living for the Lord. And so that naturally begs the question, what does living for the Lord look like? And, and so for the answer to that, we'll look at verse two, which again was my, my life verse, my memory verse. And so I'm, I'm going to read it here just to make sure I get it right, uh, even though I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So when Paul notes the world in this passage, he is focusing on the, the broken parts of the world that have yet to experience the touch and the wisdom and the grace of God. And living for the Lord often, maybe almost always, stands in opposition to the, the ways and the understanding of the world. As those who, who strive to follow Christ, we should expect to be swimming against the conforming currents of the world. So the world tends to go in a given direction, and a lot of times we're asked to, to either hold or, or to move against that, that direction. And if we think about it, how many things that are labeled as good by the world are actually destructive or diminishing and tend to pull us away from what is good and beneficial? The process of transformation and seeking the things that the world touts as good but can harm us to actually seeking what is good and helps us requires our minds to be renewed or made new. And this way of thinking allows us to be better prepared to see things from God's perspective. So the second thing I want us to consider is that cultivating a heart of worship requires transformation and the renewal of our minds. So cultivating a heart of worship requires transformation and the renewal of our minds. Now it's worth noting here that this isn't brainwashing or mindless conformity. Actually, the worldly ways tend to go that direction. Things of distraction and addiction and escapism and anything else that creates currents of culture and feeds the insecurities that, lead, that drive consumerism and the fear of missing out are all things that lead to cultural and worldly conformity. One way that I was, I was exposed to sort of checking ourselves for this and our, our lives for this conformity is to ask the question, if being a Christian were illegal, would a prosecutor be able to find enough evidence to convict me, to convict you? And if the answer might be no, we can invite God to renew our minds. We can ask the Lord to show us what we might care about more than his opinion. God, you know, show me if there's anything I value more than your opinion. Or am I worshiping something more than I'm worshiping you? Do I value likes on social media more than, than I seek to live how you like? how you ask, or even you, how you command those who want to show their love to you to respond. And that, that's convicting. And then verse 2 tells us that this process of God renewing our mind, or in this process, we start to become aware of his will for our lives. And in it, our minds are fully engaged. There is a testing involved. We see God is not afraid of the scientific process. We aren't testing God here. We are learning how to test and discern God's ways and discover what is truly good and acceptable and perfect. And the awesome part of this is that as we live more aligned with God, the, the more free we are to express the love and grace of God to others in beneficial and good ways. So after the, the Apostle Paul sets the context of living our lives for the Lord as worship, he knows how God has gifted each one of us to love and care for each other well. And then he moves into these really practical ways of how we can live this out. And that's where we're going to focus next. So in verse nine, we pick up, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. And this may seem like common sense, but there's a depth to it as we head into Christmas. In the movie, Dan in Real Life, there's a quote that is both simple and profound. It says, love is not a feeling, it's an ability. And some people may say, well, you know, of course, love is a feeling. You know, there's a responsiveness. We, we, we see somebody that we care for, and there, there, there are things that we feel inside of us. But the, the love that's expressed in the Bible, the agape love, it's an un unconditional love. It takes, it, or it's, it's sort of cultured and, and, and brought about in the context of choice 
effort, intention, and commitment. And even our commitment to God, as we, we draw near to him and, and we, we live our lives for him more and more, we start to have what's called the fruit of the spirit born through our lives. And that's represented or described as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But, but love is a key part of as that, all those things come out of us. And as we seek to love well, we can stay away from what is inherently not good and cling to what is good. And then verse 10 goes on, love one another with brotherly affection. So with like love, like family, care for each other that way, like healthy family. And then I love this. I'll do one another in showing honor. <laughs> I'll do one another, one another in showing honor. What if we all attempted to do this as, with the people in our lives as a gift? I'm doing one another and showing honor. I tried to think of what this would look like. You know, calling up my grandma. Hey grandma, you're amazing. Thank you for making literally the best chicken noodle soup every single time I was sick as a child. And even some of those times where I'm pretty sure you knew I was just faking it so I could have the soup. But that is just one way and one example of how you demonstrated your love and care for me so well. It shaped me, it humbles me, and I just want to thank you and honor you this season. Or calling up my buddy James. Hey, hey James, I just want to tell you thanks. You have helped me honor God for years now. You showed me a glimpse of unconditional love when we confessed our sins to each other and, and prayed together daily for a few years. I never thought I could let go of some of those things and I, and I didn't know that I wasn't alone in my sin. You helped me, you encouraged me, you strengthened me, you challenged me, you stood with me. You are my brother and friend and I just want to honor you. And then if someone said something like that to us, we would try to outdo them. We, we, how cool would that be? How many relationships would be strengthened and reinforced by those true and honoring words? And that's important here to acknowledge that this should only be done with sincerity. If, if we add sarcasm, even a tiny bit, it erodes the benefit entirely. It can actually scar and hurt. And, and sarcasm is, is almost always that way. So we have to be careful with that. So I'm going to lay out some Advent challenges today. So Advent challenge number one, try to outdo our loved ones in giving honor. Say what you appreciate about them, thank them and see what happens. And then along the lines of outdoing and showing honor, the Apostle Paul helps us dial in on how to serve God and each other well. In verse 11, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. So in this we see worship can be serving with joy and vigor. And slothful and zeal is a bit like dragging our feet. When there's an opportunity to serve let us, and, and demonstrate love, let us be proactive and intentional. When we go over to someone's house, what if we, we instead of kind of waiting to see who's going to jump in and do stuff and because and, we don't want to be pulled into something and then miss out on some of the fun, but what if we, we walked in and, and just looked for those opportunities to serve to say, you know, hey, can I, I help put out napkins or, or silverware? I can, get, can I get people drinks or can I organize the dessert or, or you know, what would be helpful? Because when people do that, you know, it creates a sense that, that we're all in this together and it makes hosting something all the easier and it becomes, a, it feels more like fam a family gathering where everyone is kind of playing a role and helping contribute to what's going on. And how, how great would it be to, to have guests do that when we have people over as well? And then we, we look at what it, we're told in verse 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So in this we see worship can be staying hopeful, patient, and prayerful. It can be easy to slip into anxiety and trying to force things to happen when we want them to, especially as the holidays approach. There's a worshipful way of honoring God when we trust things to him and his timing. And Christmas is a perfect example of this. I remember as a kid wanting Christmas to arrive as soon as possible. And one year we were determined to take all the waiting and wondering as to what was going to come in, in, the, in the form of presents out of the equation. And so we sought through every square inch of our house and eventually found the stockpile of gifts. And we knew my mom always listened carefully and, 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 and provided really good, thoughtful gifts. But we just, we just couldn't wait. And so we, we went and found it and, and we dug through everything. We made note of all the gifts we were going to get. And we put them back carefully. And then when Christmas Day arrived, you know, if I'm honest, it's probably my least favorite Christmas ever. Because we, we had avoided the waiting and the unknown, but we had lost the joy of the surprise. We had lost the anticipation and, and, and the, the waiting to receive a good gift from someone who, who loved us dearly and had, had thought of those things. And just like I knew I could trust my mom, we can trust God's good gifts as well with what we take to him in prayer. We know he will deliver on what is good. And, and sometimes we just need to wait. 
And look what this says in, in verse 13, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. So in this, we see worship can be acting generously to meet the needs of others and welcoming them into community. For my family, it has been difficult to have the Bay Area feel like home. You know, we've been called here for the last 15 years, but our family, all of our family is elsewhere. And so we struggle to figure out how to make some sense of, of, of home and, and, and the, the joy that comes from that, just feeling like you're connected to people. And one Thanksgiving, we were trying to figure out what to do with these feelings. And, and some friends reached out and said, hey, we're going to have a get, to get together. If you don't have any plans, we'd love to have you over. We're just going to be hosting for all the different people who don't have family here, some single, some, some couples, some with kids. Um, but we just want to have you come and, and, and be family with us. And, and for us, that changed everything. You know, we went and we, we felt like family. We felt like we had people here who cared for us the way family does. And, and it, it changed how the Bay Area felt and it allowed us to stay here all these years because of that, that gesture of kindness of, of people welcoming us into their home. And so this is an opportunity they're, they're around the season where, where people are feeling more isolated and alone if they're away from family to open our homes because after all, our, our homes are a gift from God as well. And the next one is a tough one. In verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Worship can be showing unexpected love and kindness. This is really hard. Over the years, I've had my share of people who didn't like me. I've had people attack me personally because I represented the church. I've even had people tell me that I made them feel guilty and mad because I was too nice. <laughs> they wanted to, to, to respond in the way that they, they, you know, if things were sort of escalating and, and they were saying something mean, they wanted me to respond in kind and, and get pulled into it and, and be able to or have an argument and fight. And if I'm honest, I, I wanted to at times. And sometimes I did. I, I can't say I did this perfectly. And, and at times that there have been tears and I've written responses to things that I never sent most of the time. Sometimes I've sent those responses and had to do cleanup afterwards. But in the times where I've, I've, I've held on to my conviction, in the end I gave it to God and I did my best to turn the other cheek. The holidays can be loaded with family baggage and drama. Sometimes a small gesture of kindness can open a door towards reconciliation. Proverbs 15.1 guides into this, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So here's our Advent challenge number two. Let's look for opportunities to forgive and show unexpected kindness. You know, where might those opportunities lie? What conversations would, would a, a loving response instead of just a reaction open a door for, for, for a new opportunity in that relationship? And then inevitably every season has its, its good and challenging aspects. Paul continues, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Worship can be empathizing and showing compassion to what someone is experiencing. So in a season like this, you know, many of us have experienced hardship and challenges unprecedented in our lives. And so when we encounter somebody who is having a joyful moment, maybe they got a, a raise or, or um, had the birth of a new child or, or different things have happened that they're, they're celebrating Sometimes it's hard to, to muster the, the, whatever we need to be able to, to celebrate with them because we know our own lack and we know the things that we're, we're holding on to, hope for, change in. And then for us, others of us, maybe we're experiencing one of those joyful times and, and we see somebody going through a hardship and it's, it's hard to want to draw near to that because we know we might get pulled into it and, and we just want to experience the joy for a little while before things sort of go back to normal. But in a season like this, we have an opportunity to, to come alongside of people. And if, if we're staying close to God, hopefully we have it in us to, to walk alongside of somebody who's celebrating and be happy for them or somebody who, who's, who's hurting and be able to enter into that with them too and, and support them. And even in, 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 if they need encouragement to help them be encouraged, um, but sometimes just to be with them as well. And so in all these circumstances, in, in this season, I actually had the opportunity to officiate a wedding uh, as well as to attend a funeral. And, and regardless, across the spectrum of, of whether it's joyful or hard and all of it, we can, we can come into those opportunities and, and draw near to one another and show love. And then the next few verses have, a, have similar tones, so I'll touch on them together. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, prideful, but uh, associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. So again, it's showing honor. 
If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So peacemakers. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So in this we see that worship can be laying grievances and offense at the foot of the cross. God is the best source of justice, forgiveness, and healing. He can be trusted to make each of these right at the best possible time. This is hard. It's really hard. When we see evil and brokenness, it is hard not to want to expedite things or to rise up and fight. In college, a close female friend of mine shared how she had been abused by a guy that she went on a date with. I was livid. I wanted to to channel my anger into causing this this guy pain. And I I told her that that what I wanted to do, and and I'll gladly do so, but she said that's not what she wanted. She wanted to to handle things in the right way so that, that things could be taken care of. And feeling helpless, I asked, you know, what can I do? And she said, you know, just, just listen to me. Just support me. There, there's nothing really that you, you need to do or can do. And then I said, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do that. But I, I still felt this conviction that I needed to do something. And so when, when I, I was back, you know, in my, my dorm room, I, I prayed and, and, and asked God to just show me something. And in a couple of weeks, I learned that two other close friends of mine knew women who had been abused as well. And then start, this started a path towards creating a nonprofit to help train men about treating women with dignity and respect. We traveled to high schools and fraternities and dorms and spoke to groups of guys. You know, I wanted to beat up one guy. God used that passion to help empower a whole group of young men to enact broader change. And I'm still humbled by that. And in, in noting a different approach to vengeance, Paul says, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. By doing so, by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. <laughs> and, and I love that. Sometimes we, we do wish, you know, coals were being heaped on, on the heads of those who, who deserve some kind of justice or, or, or punishment and, and those kind of things. And for, for those who, uh, well, it's first of all, here we see that worship can be loving and seek to understand people who think and value things differently. So we may not think in the terms of, of enemies in, in those words, uh, but people who, who think and understand things differently, who live differently, sometimes feel like they're opposed to us. Um, so sometimes it's, it's loving and seeking to understand those, those folks um, so that we can, we can respond in kind, uh, with kindness. And there's little that initiates change, change like hot coals in the hair. If you're by a campfire and a coal falls on your head, you start changing the situation quickly. <laughs> and as my, my friend had, who had said, you know, you make me feel guilty because you're too nice. You know, in some ways, I was addressing the, the internal stuff that I knew I needed to. I, you know, I, I was prone to reacting with swearing sometimes, or I was prone to reacting with anger and, and wanting to, to get pulled into the pettiness and those kind of things. But I was addressing that, and he was seeing me address that. And for him, it was, it was changing how I was thinking about things. It was, it was like a coal falling on his head and, and addressing his response. And so sometimes, the, as we address the stuff internally, God uses that to bring about conviction in others. And then that can, can permeate out in waves of people kind of you know, addressing their own behavior. And then pretty soon we start seeing broader change as well. And as these verses allude to, hearts are more readily transformed by, by love than acts of vengeance. And then finally, in verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here we see worship can be simply drawing close to God through his invitation in Jesus This is a season of hope, transformation, and love being victorious. One of the great things about the Bible is we get to know how it all ends. Good wins. God's love wins. And that is part of what we celebrate at Christmas. How God came to earth as a child, because as Pastor Terry often reminds us around this time of year, who could be afraid of a child? Who who would be hesitant to draw near to a child? And that child would change the world so that we could have hope even in seasons like this. So the final thing I want us to to think about is a heart of worship celebrates the gift of Jesus in every good and beneficial way we can. So if you can sing well, worship by singing out loud and strong so you can cover up my joyful noise. (laughs) If you can't sing well, sing anyway, because God loves it if our hearts are in the right place. So Advent challenge number three, make your joyful noise by finding a new way to worship God. For some of us, this could be making a point to catch all the Sunday messages leading up through Christmas or or tuning in for the Rise and Shine devotionals Monday through Saturday. 
For some of us, it may be reestablishing disciplines and patterns of prayer and reading the Bible that may have fallen off during this season. And for some of us, it might be opening our hearts to the Lord for the first time. So let us worship how we serve, show hospitality, give, forgive, hope, pray, and empathize. These not only bless others, but it also blesses God. Let us love well. Let us take on the Advent challenges as an expression of our heart of worship. Outdo one another in showing honor. Look for opportunities to forgive and show unexpected kindness. Make your joyful noise by finding a new way to worship God. This is part of how we live for the Lord with our days filled with acts of worship. So in a moment, I'll pray. But before that, I just want to thank our community for the faithful ways that you've given to the the needs within our community as people have expressed needs that have come up, but also the ongoing support of of just being able to do things like our weekend messages and and, uh, and all the different things we're doing through the week. And and giving is another aspect of worship. It's a way that we we put our heart before God because where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And and we're not to give out of compulsion. This is not a a guilt thing or or a, a pressure thing. In in his word, we're reminded that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And so whatever we can give joyfully, that's, that's, that's what our worship should be. And so if you are part of our community, I invite you to do so. You can give on online through our website, through the app, or, or if you want to mail in a check and for those under 30, a check, I'm I'm just kidding. So, so let's go ahead and close out in prayer. So Lord, thank you again, that you are Emmanuel, you're God with us. And in this season, you invite us to come with joy. You invite us to to come and just receive the gift of you, of drawing near to you, uh, of being able to to worship you as we live our lives for you. And so, Lord, help us to to allow us to step into the things that are good and beneficial, to allow our minds to be renewed, to be transformed, so that we can know the things that are good and and beneficial, that that are pleasing and perfect, Lord, in your eyes. And so, Lord, help us to pray our hearts for this Christmas season to celebrate well and that we would do those Advent challenges of outdoing and showing honor, of giving forgiveness and and unexpected kindness. And then finally, of finding new ways to to make that joyful noise and to worship you. And so, Lord, we we lift all this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now we're going to end with a fun version of a song that I, I believe most of us will recognize. And if you listen closely to the lyrics, you'll, you'll hear that it's all about you know, bringing who we are as an act of worship. And then after the song, Pastor Terry will close out with a few thoughts. Enjoy.
You know, the best thing we can give Jesus is ourselves. We give him our gifts, we give him our love. So much of Christmas is about giving, you know, because God gave, God gave us Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Christmas invites us into giving because the Lord gave. And we can never, as my grandfather used to tell me, you can never outgive God. <laughs> no way. You know why? Because He's so good and He's so God. And He wants us to so good and to so God into the lives of others. May we take advantage of the unique opportunity of this Christmas season that may mean more now than at any other time we've celebrated it. In light of all the limitations and the dark thoughts, the Lord invites us to embrace his light. That's wonderful, isn't it? Hey, don't forget, you are greatly loved. And my prayer is that our Lord would keep you in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in all ways. He is, his hand would be over your life. Let's enjoy this Christmas season together. I'll see a lot of you tomorrow on Rise and Shine. Lord bless. Chloe and Micah. And yes, we are wearing our Christmas sweaters because we have some Christmas announcements for you. One of those is to mark your calendars for <laughs> December, Friday, December 18th. Yes, it is our Christmas mosaic presentation. Every year, we have the beautiful privilege of sharing Jesus and the story of Christmas in a creative and unique way. And this year, what we will be doing is because we can't gather in person, we're bringing it to you. And so what we want to do, just to have a little bit of fun, is to have a Zoom party. And the festivities start at 7 p.m. It's going to be a really cool time to see Christmas in a unique way through a five-part series. It's these little, little pieces of the Christmas story coming together, whether it's music, videos, spoken word. We also even have a cool way of sharing about the nativity story. So make sure to check it out and mark your calendars. We wanna see you there. The other thing is we have our Christmas Eve candlelight service. Obviously, we also can't meet in person. So what we're doing is we are going to be bringing it to you. And we actually have our candlelight kits. And all you have to do is sign up online Make sure you reserve those and you can get those and pick those up or we can also bring them to you. Okay, the other thing, the last thing is that 
This year, what we'll be doing for Christmas is we're gonna be having some volunteer opportunities. Two of those are Angel Tree and Salvation Army. Angel Tree is a beautiful way to come and help um, by giving a gift um, on behalf of an incarcerated parent to their child or their loved one. And for Salvation Army, we're going to be having a time where we can drop off hot meals, so a hot meal delivery. Okay, make sure you check all of those things out and we hope to see you next week. Bye!